Our next tribute will be for the Man of Faith Award to Attorney at Law David Kazay. The tribute will be by uh, Miss Beth Dahl Sell. Who are 
uh, almost adults were, you know, were, were toddlers when I left office many years ago. But sometimes you see sparks in people that others you know, don't get a chance to see. I've seen presidents when they were governors. You know, I've seen state senators who later became governors. And, and I've seen people across the spectrum. But I saw something special in David. Let me tell you, it's not everybody who can stand up uh, and unite when it's easier to tear down. But David is a uniter. You know, there's not everybody who can talk about love uh, and trying to be kind when it would easier be easier to, to talk about hate. You know, in the politics that we have and that David worked through, you know, you know, he did it a special way. You know, he talked about forgiving people when others wanted to condemn, and he stood his ground. You know, several years ago I was in Detroit and I went to the Henry Ford Museum. And I walked in there, and I stood in the very bus and, and touched the very seat that Rosa Parks sat in, and it moved me. Because sometimes you've got to stand for what's right, even if you're condemned for doing it. Because if you don't stand for what's right, somebody will always run over you. David stood for what was right. And he continues to do it you know, in a kind and humble way. Let me tell you, when we talk about a person of faith, you know, he is one you know, that showed his pure of heart. You know, on this Easter weekend, you know, I see God in David. And I think I do because he's pure of heart. And the people you know, who are pure of heart will see God. And God is in people like David. Yeah, we have a special attorney here in town and a person you know, who cares about people. When I get a call from David occasionally, it's usually because he has a special legal problem about trying to help somebody who doesn't have any money. You know, he cares about the community. Uh, and let me just say this. You know, if you get a chance to be around David, he will be a person that unites that finds love, you know, that cares about people, and he will inspire you to do more. And I guess that's what it's all about. A man of faith, David Kazay. It seems really presumptuous in this crowd of people for me to be recognized as a man of faith because I usually really don't see myself that way. I'd like to thank George, who has been my friend and my mentor, and anything good I've done in the practice of law, I've learned to do from him, and the stuff I've messed up, I've been on my own way. <laughs> and I want to thank Beth and Mark who were here this evening and who sang my favorite hymn. Um, and I wanted to talk to you all about two things. I like stories. I'm, I'm not usually great at speeches, but I like stories. And I like movies, and so I'm sorry. Um, I want to talk to you for a second about about the last Rocky movie. You know, Rocky was like 60 years old and going to go have an exhibition boxing match. And I challenge you to go and watch this part of it because his adult son goes and says, Dad, what are you doing? This is crazy. And, you know, Rocky, in that very Rocky sort of way, says, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this, but... But the thing is that no matter how hard I hit or you hit or anybody else hits, nothing hits as hard as life. Life will put you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. The real thing is not about how hard you hit, according to Rocky, and I think he's right. It's how hard you can get hit and keep moving. How much can you take and keep going forward? And 
I, I think about that because Rocky went on to you know talk to his son a little bit, and he was like, you know, go and get what you're worth, go and do what you can, but you got to be prepared to take the hits for it. And I wanted to tell you another story because this one on this Easter weekend, you guys will, will I think, appreciate. I was, I've been thinking a lot about the prophet Ezekiel for the last few weeks. And the, the very first verses in Ezekiel says he's, he's standing there by the Kabar River in Babylon with the, with the exiles, the people who have all been taken from the homeland. They're in Babylon. They've been removed from Judah. The temple was burned to the ground. The walls were torn to the ground. And everybody was either killed or hauled off. And the Word tells us that Ezekiel was a priest. And Ezekiel's there by the, by the Kabar River in Babylon, hundreds of miles from home, hundreds of miles from the temple where God, the Most High, lived. The same God who had defeated the Egyptians, the same God who had defeated the Canaanites, the same God who had defeated the Philistines, rolled over to the Babylonians. And I, I think a lot about what is a priest, because the, the Word tells us he'd been there for five years dealing with that loss. Was God beaten? Was He forgotten? Was He already forgotten us? And the next few verses tell us that, that Ezekiel saw a great storm coming from the north. And it goes on at length describing this chariot. And in the center of this chariot is the presence of God. That I guess really for us, yeah, we can take the hits and we can keep on getting up. And as Jack Dempsey used to like to say, a champion is someone who gets up even when he can't. But the other part of that is that sometimes even when you think He's forgotten you, well, God will come for you too. Thank you all. I, I don't know really what to say other than I'm, I'm grateful.